All right, let's talk for a few minutes about how to optimize your system's dynamic range. It's actually fairly simple to do it uh, pretty easily out of the box. You just have to do a little bit of research beforehand to know what the noise floor and what the maximum input and output levels are of each device. And these are easily attainable through most manufacturer spec sheets. The first rule of thumb is to maximize the output of all devices. Because what you want to do is send the strongest possible signal out of a device so that you have the best possible signal to noise ratio exiting that device. Now we don't really care what the input capability of the device is next, you know, we just want to maximize that signal output. Because at the input of the next device, that's where we worry about if the signal is, uh, if it's too strong, then we attenuate it or pad it at the input. Uh, or if it's not quite strong enough, let's say the input capability is greater than the output capability of the device before it, then we can boost it a little bit more at the input of that device. So typically uh, you will have either a trim or gain control or perhaps simply an attenuation control at the input of the device. So if you have a knob that says input gain or trim, something like that, um, that's where you would adjust this to compensate for uh, the level of the signal incoming into that device. And this is a nice little chart here that kind of demonstrates what an unoptimized gain structure will look like uh, of a bunch of different devices with different input and output capabilities. So at each device here, let's take a look here. We're going to start with our mixer, which has a dynamic range of 96 dB, has a noise floor down here at around uh, minus 70 and goes all the way up to you know, plus 27 dBU. Uh, this next device in EQ can only handle up to uh, plus 21. The following device can handle up to plus 15. Uh, the signal delay up to plus 18. The limiter can handle up to plus 21. And our amplifier, the last device in the chain, our signal chain, can handle a signal of up to plus 3 dBU. And these are all dBU values here on this chart. And if we don't optimize the signal is going from device to device. You'll see this mixer can handle up to plus 27, but if we just leave everything at unity gain, going through all of the device here, we have to go with the lowest common denominator. Like this device here can only handle plus three, so even at our mixer, we're kind of stuck at a ceiling of plus three dBU here. So we really can't exceed that without clipping the input of our amplifier here. So it doesn't really leave us a whole lot of room. And again, our noise floor here is, uh, is going to be as high as the highest common denominator. So here our mixer actually has the highest noise floor. So the distance here between our noise floor and our maximum output of our system gives us a total system dynamic range of 72 dB. That's the distance between the noise floor and the max output. Again, that's not a 72 dBU. That's not a fixed value. It's just simply a measurement of the distance between these two dBU points. Now one way to optimize, we say okay, we, first thing we want to do is kind of take the difference between uh, the lowest two here. So this, uh, this lowest one here at plus three, the next lowest capable device is plus 15. So what if we take the difference between that and see if we can uh, optimize the chain a little bit. Up here what we do we add a 12 dB attenuation, and you know, we just simply uh, a 12 dB pad at the input of our amplifier here, and that effectively, what it does is it, it makes this amplifier able to handle a signal of up to plus 15 dBU, because if it's padding a signal by 12 dB, the incoming signal is really 12 dB greater than plus 3. So we take 12 plus 3, that gives us um, that sort of virtual input capability of plus 15. So now if we slide the whole scale up, so now let's say our amplifier here can handle just as much as this, uh, the next lowest device here, our notch filter at plus 15. Now you can see, you know, there isn't quite as big of a difference between this device and the others here in the chain. Now the mixer can go up to plus 15 without overloading the amplifier because it has this 12 dB pad. It's knocking down by 12 dB any strong signals that are coming in here. Or really all signals that are coming in. It's attenuating the whole thing by 12 dB. So now 
by making that one adjustment on the input of the amplifier, by kind of shifting this amplifier's input capability up, you know, sliding this whole bar up a little bit, uh, our dynamic range of the entire system has been increased to 84 dB. So let's go back and take a look real quick and just kind of go in A and B. This is before and after the adjustment. Before the adjustment, after the adjustment. So you can see how it's kind of virtually sliding that amplifier up into the same range of being able to handle the same kind of level of signals as the devices before it. Okay, well what if we do that for all of the devices? If we optimize everything, this is really what we want. We want the peak output of the mixer to be able to send out and have the EQ be able to handle that full signal and the output of the EQ be able to be handled by the notch filter and so on and so forth so that each device's peak output uh, is able to be accepted by the device following it. So here if the mixer can, hand, can uh, send out uh, plus 27 dBU but this EQ can only handle plus 21 we have to put a 6 dB pad because this is 6 dB greater than what this device can handle. So this device plus a 6 dB pad it can handle up to plus 27. And likewise up here if this one can generate plus 21 dBU out and this one can only handle uh, plus 15 that's a difference of 6. You know this thing's sending at a signal that's 6 dB hotter than this notch filter can handle. So we've got to put a 6 dB pad at the input of this notch filter here. And going forward, of course, uh, this one can output up to plus 15, but this one can handle a greater signal. So we're not attenuating, but we actually have to boost the signal after the notch filter has already kind of maxed out its capability. So at the input of our signal delay, we can boost the signal another 3 dB. And likewise, from the signal delay to the limiter, at the input of the limiter, assuming we have an input trim adjustment on our limiter, we can boost that by 3 dB. And then finally, the difference between the limiter at plus 21 and our amplifier at plus 3 is going to be 18 dB. So at our amplifier input trim, we're going to put, we're going to set that to minus 18 because we've got to knock down the signal by 18 dB in order for it to kind of fit where this amplifier can handle. It can handle plus 3, this thing sending plus 21, so we've got to cut the whole thing by 18 dB at the input here. Because remember, you have to remember that when we're attenuating the signal at the input, we're attenuating everything. We're not just attenuating the signal, but we're also attenuating the entire noise floor as well. It's not just a selective attenuation. Now, if you attenuate at the output of the device, if you simply say, oh, you know, I'm not going to output plus 21, I'm only going to output plus 3, well, this noise floor still stays the same at the output of the device because the device, whether or not it's outputting a signal or not, um, it still generates a set amount of noise just based on the electronics of that device. So if you're just turning down the signal, uh, you're, you're turning down the signal compared to the noise. So your signal to noise ratio will, will be less. However, if you turn down the attenuation after it leaves this device, so you have the signal voltage of a fixed signal against the volt against your noise, and you turn down that entire signal, then you're also turning down the noise. So you're not sacrificing any signal to noise ratio. You're simply lowering everything. And then once it comes into our amplifier here, it can handle that full level signal out. Um, from the device before it with that uh, input attenuation pad. So again, if we go back, we started with a system dynamic range of 72 dB from its maximum output to its noise floor. Make one adjustment at the input of the amp here. And here in this case, it's a 12 dB attenuation. Uh, and then our, that increases our system dynamic range to 84 dB. And if we optimize everything going across the chain, now we have a system dynamic range of 90 dB. So going from an unoptimized of 72 to an optimized um, gain structure of 90, and we've gained 18 dB of more signal compared to noise. So it's 18 dB less noisy. Um, and that's certainly a very good thing to have, especially in a live sound system where uh, 
you're turning up the gain quite a bit and you're trying to get every last bit of uh, level out of the system to cover you know, people far away. I'm sure you've all heard the PA systems that just when they're not even amplifying anything, you just hear this kind of noise in the background coming out of the loudspeakers. Well, that's a system that has not been optimized. Um, you don't want to have any just background noise being uh, amplified through the system. You want to maximize the amount of signal to noise. So you really shouldn't hear a whole lot of you know, hiss or just general kind of noise through a loudspeaker system. Uh, it's kind of a dead giveaway that uh, someone needs to optimize the gain structure of that particular system. 